Boom. Simple but effective skin. And we'll yeah, simple but effective sunburn. Fantastic. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Hola, como esta? Today we're going to be reading some art tutorials on YouTube Shorts. I love YouTube Shorts. I have so many friends on here and enemies. Looking at you, Kool Aid. How to find your style, traditional art edition. Here's a great exercise to help you find your style. So paint something 10 different times and play around with different things like different materials. So use a round versus a flat brush, use cool or warm color scheme. Do it very realistic versus more abstract and simplistic and start to kind of see what you like. It will start to develop your style the more you paint and play around with it. Okay, experimentation is super important when it comes to finding your style. I just wanna add one more thing to this point and that is look at other people's work. Observe the works of other artists artists. Find the things that you like about their art, okay? And learn from how they do it. That's how I found my personal style. There's no art tutorial here. There's no teaching here. You don't provide a solution. Fantastic. Here's a word of advice to beginners. You want to just try your best to avoid this type of line art. Even if you're not entirely sure how that line should look, just try to draw it in as few lines as possible. It's not about perfection. It's about practice. You just want to get used to making these lines so that your hand-eye coordination can be perfectly in sync. You know, just eye tutorial. Draw two dots like I did. Okay. 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 Oh my God, those eyes look so cute. Semicircle for the iris. Okay, great. Cute. You think I'm gonna poop on this tutorial? No, I'm not. I always say, you know, the space in between your eyes should be equal to the length of one eye. But obviously that's a guideline that's gonna change depending on the art style that you do, but it is a great learning guide. So when you draw in this style, some of these rules can actually be broken. And I wanna give you props here for drawing the eyes together instead of drawing one eye from start to finish and then moving on to the other eye. That's one of the biggest mistakes that you can make because it's just going to throw off your process. I've talked about glazing before where you put a color on top of a color you've already painted, but a cool effect you can do with glazing is while it's still wet, pull some of that glaze off, kind of gives it this like luminescent effect to it. So with glazing, you have so many options, not just glazing on top, but then kind of pulling some of that glaze off and you get a completely different effect. I love how this is traditional art, but it also applies to digital. So essentially how this translates into digital art is when you're using a brush with pressure opacity on, it means that the lighter you press, the more transparent that color is going to appear. And I do this all the time, man. I put down a color and then I throw a different color on top. I glaze it over really lightly. And that kind of allows the base color to show through while you're applying another color on top. And together they mix and create this new, wonderful, beautiful color. It's like red plus blue. Purple. How to draw this eye? Okay. Oh, all right. Um, this is the skull of my enemy. So just as a word of advice, okay, when you look at a skull, it looks like this, and there are these two eye sockets. When you're thinking of the eye, it's always helpful to think of that eyeball and how it sits inside the eye socket. It's a round ball. And you guys see the iris here, which is the dark circle in your eye that shows people where you're looking. Inside of this round iris, there is a pupil. That's where light enters your eyes. As an anatomy tip, this pupil is always going to be in the center of your iris. If your eyes are looking in different directions, the iris might turn from a circle to an oval and vice versa. So remember your anatomy, okay? Don't just do the lines. Know why you're doing them. Seven out of 10. Base tutorial for beginners. Okay, so there's a circle, there's this uh, wedge shape at the front. That's exactly how I would do it. Oh, the spacing between the eyes too. Okay, that's good. Excellent. Okay, eyebrows, all right. Should be doing both sides at the same time. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so this person's not really explaining the process right now, but as a general rule, there's like three thirds on your face vertically. So there's the forehead, the nose, and the chin area. Okay, this is not the face anymore, that's hair. This. <laughs> Stop. This is good. It's a solid process. You've got all the right construction lines, but I do wish you talked a little bit more just about why you were doing certain things during the steps of the process. So I'm going to give this a seven. This is Santa's <laughs> body tutorial. First circle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that looks pretty good, actually. That's crazy. Of course, yes, of course, of course. Arms. Wow, it's 
pretty good. I love that you didn't know what you were doing at all and just came up with the results. That's fantastic. I'm gonna pause it right here, okay? So if you understand the anatomy, things start to make more sense. The line of action that you've drawn is just the line continuing down the spine. And this line shows, ooh, I'm getting old. This line shows you the direction of your character's body and it's very, very useful. Eight out of 10, good job. If you're a beginner, don't. Uh, um, yeah, one out of 10. Do you think you're funny? You, you, you're endangering the art babies. One out of 10. Face structure for beginners. Everyone wants to talk about faces now, huh? So, okay, circle. <laughs> it's always the circle. Okay, and then you add the shape of the face. All right. What's that line? Can you explain, explain it to me like I'm four? As much as I want to love YouTube shorts, I feel like it's suffering from some of the same problems as TikTok right now. It's hard to find someone who actually explains things. If you're watching this video, okay, I, I want you to always ask one question, why? And if you cannot answer why, don't do it, okay? Don't do it. If you don't understand the reasoning behind what you're doing, don't do it. Stop drawing your hair like this. Draw a line in the middle and draw some hair growing out of it like this. Draw a U above the hairline with two lines growing out. Finally, add some continuous lines at the bottom of the hair and for detailing. And there you go. That actually looks pretty good. Good job. The only thing that would make this drawing even better is if you added more silhouettes. So for example, maybe some loose strands towards the bottom that kind of flare outwards instead of just all going in the same direction. I might sell the look of hair a little bit more, but then again, your character might have very straight and neat hair. So up to you. Want to learn how to fix your ashy, crusty looking skin and paint skin like this? First, pick a base color, which is so- now Help me find the difference here. What is this? What is this? Crusty skin, what is this? Are we playing find the difference? First, pick a base color, which is somewhere around here. Choose an orangish tone for the shadow. Then choose a blush and gently glaze that thing all over the middle of the face. I then go back with the hard round brush and define the edges I want to keep. Some more blending. Then I add in some extra pizzazz and boom. Simple but effective skin. And yeah, simple but effective sunburn. Five out of 10. Easy way to draw. I can't read fast enough, guys. Easy way to draw anime face. Horizontal lines should be below the center. Okay, at chin and cheeks. Yes, good. Ears and eyes are on the center line. Okay, distance between the eyes of big and width of one eye. Great, I love that. Okay, mouth is between the nose and the chin. Yeah, no, no, sh no. Sh mouth is between the nose and the chin. Where else would it be? Is my mouth gonna be between my nose and my eye? Get it together. Nine out of 10. Still sketch like this. No matter what you try, you're trying to sketch loose but you're feeling a bit scared well if so try my tip this oh mistakes are your superpower don't be afraid to make them and make them on purpose break the mold take the Ooh. lines and kink them at it all Ooh. flares add stupid loose silly little flourishes of your pen at the end you add a little bit of boldness you bring those lines together some structure and ta-da now you're sketching loose with character is it just me or did he sounds like an artist. You know what I mean? I love this tip because he's using pen and ink, but this applies to every medium. The moral of the story is don't be afraid. Don't let your mistakes hold you back. Sometimes the mistakes actually make the painting. Beginners tend to start shading from light and then add black for the shadow. This makes the shading muddy and dull. Instead of thinking of shadows as just a darker shade of light, think of it as another light source with different hue and saturation. I suggest working from dark to light instead. Dude, the pen leg. If you're working on the- The leg. Then on a new layer, add a new light source hitting the face. I'm going for a warmer light on this one. It's between the color and saturation, between the light and the shadow. As a final touch, add bounce light on the other side of the face. So that's the original. This is the new one. I do like the colors here much, much more. So this is a great tutorial. And the moral of the story here is that you should always consider the color that's actually in your shadow. It's not just shadow, it's ambient light. So no shadow is ever gonna be pure black unless it's completely devoid of light. And no matter where you stand, as long as you can see someone, they're usually not completely devoid of light. Nine out of 10, good job. Here's how you can draw this. Oh, Step one. it's Rishi. 
All right, here's the tea. So YouTube notifies creators when another creator comments on their videos. Rishi, bless his soul, he comments on my videos and then he replies to every single reply in his comment. And every other day, I'm getting another notification that Rishi commented on my video. Rishi, you're a really nice guy. You're a great guy, but stop it. Okay, I don't want to have to start YouTube beef with you. I don't want you, Rishi, to end up like this. Just look at what happened to Kool-Aid. You want that to happen to you? You canvas with a dark blue, then paint a gradient and blend it with a Gaussian blur. Step two, turn on the grid drawing guide with assisted drawing on, then begin painting rectangular shapes for the buildings, making each new layer progressively darker. After that, paint in windows with a smaller white brush and finally oh I, I love that brush that's a really good brush air behind it add some clouds step three draw some flying cars using this basic shape flying cars a smaller one further away and mirrored one on the opposite side after that use the light pen to add tail lights and use the flare brush on a color dodge layer to add lens flare finally add a perspective blur to just these layers step four, copy and flip everything vertically then apply a gaussian blur followed by a downward motion blur now find a silhouette on unsplash.com bring it in appropriate and crop it then paint a platform and place your silhouette on it. Step five, add details like smoke, horizon elements, and shadow details. Use the light leak brush for lighting effects, add bloom and chromatic aberration. Finally, add some sci-fi elements and make them glow using bloom. And that's it, you're done. That's sick, dude. So simple and precise. I love it. That's a 10 out of 10. Great job. I love that Rishi actually explains this whole process to people. It's so rare nowadays. Thank you for that. But my God, don't you dare start another comment chain on this video. I'm watching you. I'm, mm. I've been asked a bazillion times to do a tutorial. Start. So here you go. I usually start off with cylinders, larger at the top and smaller at the bottom, like this. I make two, one for the thigh area, which is larger, and one for the shin area, which is smaller, and a circle for the knee. Now, in general, this makes sense and it works, but after playing around a bit, I knew I needed some help explaining this. So I went to the bookshelf to grab a copy of Bridge. Look at all these figures. That's sick. What is that? Superman? There's Han Solo, Batman, and Robin. That's awesome, Scott. You should do a collection tour. This is the book I turn to when I need help with human anatomy. It's really well done, easy to read, and great art. Ooh. As artists, we can't remember every lesson we've ever learned, and we're absolutely not expected to be experts in everything art. So don't be afraid to open open up a book, trace someone else's art, and learn from them. By simply tracing over these drawings, I remembered something I'd long forgotten. The leg muscles have counterbalances. The muscles are angled opposites of each other, yes. like this. So now when you simplify your shapes, you can draw them more like this. See? I think that looks much closer to how legs work. I hope this helps. I'll yes. leave a link to Bridgman's book in my art supply list in my bio. Again, I'm not a teacher, just a fellow student of art, learning right alongside you. It's so, so good. Stop it. Remember that we're all learning, okay? It doesn't matter how good someone is. doesn't matter how much knowledge someone has. We're all still learning. Someone claims to be a master, they're probably out of their minds. Great job, Scott. I love the approach of using three-dimensional shapes to construct the leg. Well done. Thanks for teaching the babies. Quick mental health hack. This is going to cure all my trauma. Okay, squiggly lines. Add curved lines in each section. Okay. It's pretty, but it's not curing my mental health yet. I'm still sad. That's really pretty. Wow. Now show me the part where you hack my mental health. Three out of 10. Now fill in your base color. Then shape the upper half of the eyeball with a darker color. Yeah. Use that same color around the border of the eye messily. Use your darkest shade to color over it again for depth and to emphasize the pupil. For the eye white, choose a lighter, desaturated version of the skin tone. Then, airbrush a peach ring around the eye. Using quick strokes, add the highlights around the pupil. Add highlights under the eyelash to imply shadows. At the end, I will add white highlights. Now, continue painting and rendering the eyes and focus on adding depth and darkness. Here's the finished eye. Hmm. You, I feel like you had me here in the first half. Like, this was really good but after this point i did feel like the highlights were a little bit too scattered and too kind of all over the place but again that just might be your art style and that just might be my personal preference so if you're wondering why is the top half of the iris darker than the bottom half it's because it's in shadow if you have a light source shining down from the top it's going to cast a shadow from your top eyelid and as a result of that light source the bottom half of your iris is also going to be brighter okay so just know why you're doing things don't just do it nine out of ten great job with the walkthrough here welcome there are four finishing touches you can add to your artwork. The first one, we're going to need a new layer set to clipping mask and filled with a 50% grey. Then go to the noise function and set it somewhere around 10%. This just adds a little subtle grainy texture. Now to make this thing show through in your artwork, just set the layer to overlay. I used to always wonder how people did that and I think that's a really good tip to add some texture to your drawings. Duplicate the drawing and then go to chromatic aberration to get this wild colour effect. Let's tweak the colour balance a bit. It can be nice to push your shadows more into the blue and your highlights more into the reddish yellow. Just adds a bit more color variation. Now the 
the last thing we're going to do is we're going to tie everything together with one color. Add a new overlay layer and drop in a color you like. Pull the opacity down so it isn't too strong and tweak it until you're happy. This gives your whole drawing a kind of tint brings all the colors in one direction. I love all of these tips except for this last one. And that again, just might be a personal preference. So I think your drawing was more powerful here because you had a great range of hues. You had oranges, you had blues, right? And then when you add the tint, see everything starts shifting towards the reds. And I, I don't know, it feels like it's missing something. For me, I'm just coming from a standpoint of thinking about how colors work off of one another. If you have a blue and an orange, you've got complementary colors. Now, if you were to wash them down and push them towards the reds, your complementary color scheme becomes less strong. That's the whole reasoning. I just prefer more variety in terms of the uh, range of the color spectrum. That's it for today's video. Hopefully you guys learned something new. If you want to see more videos just like this one, please do subscribe to my channel and check out my Patreon for monthly tutorials. With all that being said, I'll see you guys on the next video. My camera's hot. It's hot. It's about to blow up. <coughs> oh my God. Okay. I got to pull. I got to pull. I got to pull.